What is up everybody? Once again, thank you so much for stopping by at the channel today. I'm sure you know who this big guy here is. What's up guys? One modification that he did on his truck is he did an L5P drive shaft for his long bed um, crew cab, so eight yep. foot bed. Yeah, so uh, I wasn't able to actually document the video, but since we have Beard's truck here today, his LB7, it's a crew cab, six and a half foot bed. He has a two piece drive shaft just like Kyle's LBZ over here. Overall, what are your thoughts on the one-piece drive shaft design there? So the one-piece drive shaft, going from the two-piece to it, it's just a whole lot less moving parts. Now I've heard that, you know, going from the steel two-piece to the one-piece aluminum, yeah, you're gonna lose some, I guess, rigidity to it, but I think that's BS. Less moving parts makes, you know, for less, you know, better efficiency and a stronger shaft to it. The, these guys, they put these uh, shafts, they're from L5Ps, so they're great parts, full aluminum, so they weigh so much less, keeping, in my opinion, the same amount of power ratio that they're able to hold. I haven't seen one broke yet on one of these conversions from the guys, so it's really great. I enjoy mine. Uh, it's awesome. I think it's going to hold up for a long time. He's the only one to document that on his YouTube channel. I think that's the only video in existence right now. Only one I've seen. Yeah, so if you do have a two-piece drive shaft in your Duramax, this might be very helpful. And if you don't, watch the video. I think it's going to be very insightful for some of you guys that are interested in doing some pretty awesome beefy rear ends. Now, this video right here is sort of a dovetail off the last video that I posted on the Beard's LB7 Duramax rear end AAM uh, track right 373 gear. So essentially a rear end from a Dodge Cummins. And um, I think this thing's going to lay down some serious power. So other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. It still isn't gonna fall off. No, yeah, normally you gotta tap them down. We're gonna transfer this ring gear over onto the new carrier and then we'll uh, clean everything up, reassemble the ring gear on there, relock tight bolts on down on there, and then uh, flush the housing, get that thoroughly flushed out, and then we'll uh, reinstall the carrier and uh, set backlash, check pattern, and put our LA shafts in, and then finish up our one piece shaft. You're basically you're just gonna remove the two piece drive shaft. It's pretty straightforward. It's gonna remove right here from the t-case and then of course right here to the pinion the other thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is remove all four bolts which are 11 millimeter all right guys before you do this install right here you will have this cross member uh, what you want to go ahead and do is just simply cut this 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 little uh, bracket right here off from here to here on each side right here All right, on the 0102 short beds, if your truck didn't have a service bolt and done from the factory, your truck had a two-piece drive shaft in it. Um, if your truck has a one-piece aluminum now and it's an 0102, somebody took it back to the dealer and they did a service upgrade on it. We've got our 1480 yoke on, got our drive shaft with our 1480 joints, and Tyler's gonna install it, it's ready to go. Cheaper to do the 1480, the cost of the parts, than the 1410, and the 1480 is way beefier stuff. So the only thing you'll need to do though is you'll also have to buy the straps that your bolts will be the same. So you can reuse your old bolts then? Yep. Guys, technically, if somebody didn't want to get the, the adapter, you would have to take that U-joint out and do they even make a 1410 slash 1480 U-joint? I haven't seen one, but I haven't also researched it either. So it's pretty much just smarter. Get all the pieces at the same time. Right. Right. So go ahead and get the drive shaft, both the new 1480 straps, as well as the new yoke end for it. fine, doesn't fry the tires, nothing. It's not until you want it to go that it actually lights and goes. Oh, 
All right, guys, so very informative stuff as always. I'll leave the part number in the description below if you're interested in looking that up by chance. It'll be all three part numbers. You'll have the shaft, both new straps, and then uh, the adapter yoke to the 1480U joints. So I do appreciate your guys' support. As always, guys, make sure you subscribe to Rust Belt Mechanic. Look at this guy right behind me. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the YouTube videos. Take care.